it's not some grandiose epiphany where you wake up one day and that's it, I'm a trader. Okay, I got it all figured out. It's more of a million little things that you could do. And one thing that we'll get into in upcoming weeks is that our, as humans, this is actually a really good thing, okay? As humans, we are very resistant to change. Our bodies have this homeostasis. Think about your temperature, okay? Your temperature goes up five degrees or down five degrees, you're probably going to die. So our bodies are used to try to keep things on even keel and fighting off drastic changes. And, and again, I'll get into the neurology of that and the psychology in upcoming webinars. And there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, people doing all these fad things now for dieting and all, and and, and I'll get into that too. But and in most cases, these people end up much worse off than they were before, which is unfortunate. But don't expect some kind of huge epiphany to occur. It's a million little things that, that are going to make you. So there's no holy grail, as I preach week in and week out. But there's a lot of little things you could do, like follow that silly little TFM 10% system. I'm not saying put your life savings into it or whatever, but use that as one of your tools to keep you in or out of the market. So you're going to have some minor epiphanies here and there. Just don't expect anything earth shattering. Now that's the bad news. So the good news is, again, there are many little things you could do to become more and more successful. And we're just going to scratch the surface tonight. I have a feeling that this series might go on for a while. I keep thinking of more and more of these things, and in some cases, forgetting to write them down. But they're going to all come out over time. And I've got so many more that I've written about previously. In fact, I found an article or a topic, however you want to look at it, that's part of a book I'm working on called Turn the Thought. And this is where a lot of this thinking comes from. But anyway, I want to start with with documentation for this series and your morning pages, and we'll probably come back to that. So that's kind of the beginning and the end, kind of to bookmark this whole series. And I can't say enough about these two things, but I want to kind of get into them a little bit tonight, and we can certainly flesh them out over time. But your documentation, your trading journal, that is, and your morning pages are going to be your two best friends as far as little things and, and painless little things. Now, obviously, in your trading journal, you want to document your trades. You also want to document with intent. And you want to imagine that you're going to show this journal to someone to explain what you did and why you did it. So make sure you put a lot of details into, into that. Now, obviously, you want to document the trading details, okay? But you also want to document your thought process and your fears, including FOMO, temptations, and emotions. And that's that's vitally important. And you want to seek to identify, embrace, and eliminate the extraneous. Anything that has nothing to do with trading that's influencing you. And you're going to be surprised, actually shocked especially if you do a lot of documentation as to how many things that have absolutely nothing to do with trading that are influencing you. Like I said a few weeks back, I had one of my biggest day, at least on an intraday basis, a few weeks back, one of the biggest days I can remember. And then the following day, I gave nearly all of it up because I walked into my office and I'm like, I'm Dave effing Landry, you know? <laughs> laugh to keep from crying, but you want to seek to identify, embrace, and, and embrace is key, okay? It's like, why am I feeling this way? Figure that out and eliminate the extraneous, and, and there's tons and tons of extraneous things. Now, the immediate extraneous should be, should be fairly obvious, and that might be FOMO or a trade goad. I, I talk with a lot of you guys, and sometimes I get caught up in, in what you're doing, and then I need to realize that I'm not you. You might have been doing this for a long time. You might know more about this particular market, being options or whatever. And maybe I just need to sit back and, and relax and watch and see what happens. So I am susceptible to trade goals. I have one client who's really good at scalping and day trading. 
And every now and then we'll be chatting back and forth in text and he'll tell me what markets he's trading. And I do find myself getting sucked in sometime. The good news is, is a little thing that I do, one of the million little things. And when that happens, I write his name and Bob, it's not his real name, but I'll just put Bob Goad. Like, why did I take this trade? Well, because Bob's taking it. It's like, which is stupid. I realize that. Okay. So I'm admitting guilt here. And I, and trust me, I don't, I don't do as many Bob Goads as I used to because through my morning pages, as I'll explain in one second, I realize that maybe I'm the definition of insanity. You know, by the way, one of the little things I want to add, I was just thinking a few minutes ago in the shower is that at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be war and peace or huge write up, but write what you did well today and write what you did poorly. Okay. And then you can elaborate on those things tomorrow if you want in the morning pages. But your immediate extraneous should be fairly obvious what's influencing that trade. That has nothing to do with the market. And your morning pages will reveal the possible longer term root cause. It may be, maybe you're just really needing money. Like, for instance, my wife's car been in the shop you know, three weeks. And it's like every time we take it out... Uh, we bring it right back because they still haven't fixed the problem, and then they ended up tearing off, <laughs> tearing into the whole engine. It's just like it's just a it was a nightmare, and you know every time she complains about that, I kind of relive it. It's like okay, well, how do I make up that several thousand dollars? Could I go in and make some day trades? Well, that's the worst thing you could ever do, right? But it's like I'm, at least I'm recognizing that extraneous is is influencing me, and there's there's all kinds of little things too that your documentation is going to reveal. I'll give you an example. A, a, a peer of mine, I guess that's what you'd call him. Uh, he's a trader guy. He's a public figure. He's really good at what he does. But he had a really bad week trading a while back and he couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then I think it was Friday afternoon or Friday night. He had a beer when he got home or whatever. And he's like, oh my God, I had he had made like a forty thousand dollar payment, tuition payment for his son or something. And I think that that lack of money or that pouring of money out, however you want to look at it, really affected him. And he didn't even realize how bad that affected him throughout the week until Friday afternoon it was a little too late. But going into the following week, he's like, okay, I'm not gonna make 40 grand this week, but let me see if the market will come to me and maybe I can make back a little bit of that. But let's the, let the market again come to me. Anyway, morning pages, one of the best things I've ever done in my life. I tell everybody I see, I shot it from the rooftop that you should do morning pages. Nobody's gotten back to me. If anybody's doing morning pages, let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know. I'd be very impressed if you were. Years ago, I did them and I regret, I'm talking 30 years ago, I regret not following through and i started them again at least maybe six or seven years ago it's been a while and it's it's one of the greatest things i've ever done as far as life is concerned and trading and it's just wonderful and i started back up after being reminded about them through julia cameron years ago i called it a brain dump just get up and write everything in your head julia cameron in her book the artist's way which i loaned out so I don't know exactly everything she says, but I read like the first chapter and I haven't finished the book. But the first chapter talked about the morning pages. Now she does some things that seem a little quirky to me, like create characters and all, like Doubting Dave and um, whatever, uh, you know, FOMO Fred or whatever you want to call them, different characters and, and talk about that. To me, that's a, that's a little bit esoteric or kind of out there but whatever works for you. But the bottom line is just wake up and write three handwritten pages. Now, what I would encourage you to do is to stay analog. And I started a book a while back. I haven't finished it yet uh, by quick. It's called Limitless. And it's a pretty good book. The only My only dig so far, and that's probably why I'm a little slow to go through it, but the, the information is great. He does spend a little time telling you what he's going to tell you, which sort of it's one of my little pet peeves when somebody spends too much time doing that. Hopefully I don't do that. At least I try not to. And in my writing, I just try to tell you and let me know if I, if I, if I'm guilty of that. But anyway, uh, it's a book by quick. It's limitless. I would recommend you read it. I do plan on finishing it. 
And but anyway, he talks about the the information deluge that we deal with, and it's very important to wake up and stay analog for a little while. It's good for your mental health because we're go 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 all day. My phone makes alerts all day long. I have no idea what they are half the time. So you've got all these apps, all these programs, all this social media. It's just constantly going off, and it's it's just this barrage of information coming at you. And the bottom line is, it's it's very good for you to just kind of wake up and be quiet for a little while. So try to stay analog best you can. Avoid X, Facebook, any social media, YouTube, emails, the TV, markets. Now. I'm a little guilty there because I will check crypto, but I do, and I do resist coming in here and turning on all my screens and looking at everything super early in the morning when I wake up. But basically, you want to avoid everything electronic, unless you're using an electronic notebook. And I use this Remarkable, which I absolutely love, and it's got thousands, literally thousands of handwritten pages in it. And we could talk about that uh some more if you'd like but it's it's a wonderful thing one of the digs on it which i think is actually a positive is there's no there's no clock in here there's no internet other than being able to upload to your email there's only one way so you're not and i got add i or i have add i guess with the correct way of saying that uh not diagnosed but diagnosed by the wife and, and she's probably right uh, one of my neighbors jokingly every now and then scream squirrel to see see if i look away <laughs> But the bottom line is I actually like the fact that it's a very pure, it's almost like paper in a notebook other than you could convert to text and then upload your stuff to your email or however you want to get it into your computers. Anyway, I like it because of that, because it's just this pure analog thing. So try to avoid your electronics if at all possible, other than your electronic notebook. Now, this is kind of a daunting task, and I get that. And it's a lot harder than you think it would be. It's not easy, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, but write about anything, write about everything, and write about nothing, okay? You can write about your to-dos, what you have to do. And it, it's a great exercise in getting organized for the day. Write about your aggravations, your frustrations, your trials and tribulations. Are you tired? Are you rested? Did you stay up late watching some stupid whatever? Did you get a good night's sleep? And if you don't know what to write about, write exactly that down. Geez, I don't know what to write about. And then maybe say, you know, if I didn't know what to write about, if I did know what to write about, this is what I would write. But obviously you want to talk a little bit at some point. And and again, there's no schedule here. Don't preload, for instance. I as I've said before, I was telling someone about this and, and he was studying to be a deacon and he's like, oh yeah, well, I've got to do all this reading and I'm going to do all my readings first when I first wake up because that's what I like to do them. And then I'm going to write about my readings. It's like, no, that's, that's not what it's about. If you do your, if you, if you think about some of the readings you did the day before or whatever, and you want to write a little bit about that, that's fine. But try not to preload with anything. And ideally, like in my case, I should probably put my morning pages in the next page for tomorrow, the night before, because sometimes I will go through the notebook and I'm looking at notes and to-dos and all this other stuff. Before you know it, I am kind of off in three or four different directions. Imagine that. But the bottom line is try not to preload. Just do them. This is gonna. This will change your life. It's going to improve your trading. I can't say enough good about them. I know it doesn't sound that exciting, but you're going to be shocked at what will come from this. Now, keep in mind, you're not writing war and peace. Don't judge yourself. One thing I do, because I know I'm, if I'm spelling something wrong or whatever, I just put SP in questions like, did I spell that wrong or whatever? It, who cares? Nobody cares. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about spelling. But your grammar and your spelling will get better over time by doing this, by the way. So again, you're not writing war and peace. Don't judge yourself. And nobody is going to look at this other than you i will say i did leave a notebook <laughs> i did leave an open notebook it was in my hand and i, I would not i wasn't doing my pages in the bathroom but i left it in the bathroom once when we were at the rental house because everything was kind of just everywhere 
when we were in the process of moving and I wasn't, well, I'm not organized now, but I was even less organized then. And my daughter happened to be visiting and she noticed the notebook. She read a few things um, that that got me a little trouble that involved her. <laughs> but for the most part, uh, just make sure, or, or general, just make sure nobody sees this. This is your own private little deal and, and only share what you want shared, obviously. The hardest part is getting started in this and making it a habit. In the first few days, it, it, it was really hard to start back up. And I was like, oh, this is why I quit because it's so damn hard. But now, and I know you want to party with me, but now the first thing I do when I wake up, it, in fact, it gets me out of bed. I, like I'll lay in there going like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. It's like, well, let me just get my writing done and see where we go from there. So it's not easy getting started. I find about midway through the half, midway through the second page, things start to click a little bit. I might just write about a bunch of random stuff, but then I actually might get something good about a page and a half or maybe two pages in. But I don't, I don't put that expectation on myself. So don't, don't say I'm going to write about this and I'm going to get this and do that. If you want to do all that, that's fine. Do your three pages first. And you might find that that kind of warms you up for all that. Now it does take some time. I don't time them. I know it, it takes me a little while. I write from probably, well, I get about 4.55 every day and I'm done writing about 6.30. Now a lot of that might be working on a book or working on some writings for the week of charts or, or for whatever, or some thoughts on trading. But for the most part, you could probably get them done fairly quickly and, and just try to keep the pen and try to make it like flow. There's a few things that, I, that I'm thought about as I'm going live tonight is that there's a, there's a psychology in doing this that's good for you. In addition to the neurology for the, for the warm up for your day, but there's a psychology and it's been seen in some cases, I've seen psychologists talk about doing something like this as therapeutic and a form of meditation. And it's virtually free, although I, I, I would buy cases of pen refills when I just had the, uh, before I had the, the tablet. And then now I have to buy tips for the pens because I do wear those out every now and then. But for the most part, it's virtually free. And again, neurologically, it's a great brain warm up. In the quick book, he talks about that we consumed and are bombarded with more information in one day than people in this 15th century consumed in a lifetime. And he talks about, and this is another study he quoted, talks about we consume more information or, or we consume three times the amount of the information as we did in the 60s. I would say it's more like 30 times the amount. So I, I found that number a little low, but but it is amazing. And I think I've heard some studies going back like a hundred years and just the amount of information that we take in in one day would take a year to, to have that much information years and years ago. And if you think about all the things that are going on, and I'm guilty as anyone, I mean, I've got these six screens or seven screens, however many screens, going on and I'm obviously the market's pulling me in these different directions. I'm getting alerts on different things. I'm getting social media alerts and all. And you got to really learn how to manage that. And I, I need to be better about that. But it, it's a nice, quiet, gentle introduction to the day's deluge of information overload ahead. Now it will unearth some deep seated issues, which could be good and bad. And the good thing is you'll quickly identify, especially as it's as it relates to trading, if you become Einstein's, have become Einstein's definition of insanity, and that's doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. Now, again, you want to keep those expectations low. I go in with zero expectations, and a lot of times I'm pleasantly surprised. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm kind of like uh, really into, like lately I've been building a dining room table and I'm beginning, uh, I've, I've gotten heavily back into woodworking lately. So sometimes I'll find myself writing a lot about woodworking. Obviously I, I write a lot about trading and then I write about what's going on in life too. 